Hi guys, welcome to my first episode of Lucky Me Podcast. I am Sage Lesher and I'm so happy that you guys are all here listening or watching on my YouTube channel, Sage Lesher. If you're on Spotify, hi, welcome. If you're watching on my YouTube, hi, welcome. I love you guys all so very much. I'm so excited and nervous to start this podcast. You guys are going to laugh at me. This is my fourth time trying to film this and record this. Um, a lot of technical difficulties. So we're trying to figure it out. I've never done something like this. So this is a new journey and experience for everybody here. So I'm so excited to start today. Before every episode, I want to say one thing that I'm lucky or grateful for. You know, I'm going to say that I'm lucky to have my dog, Shiloh. She's laying right next to me. She's a three-year-old Newfoundland dog. Um, I love her so much, and I'm so lucky to have her in my life. She's the best thing that I ever decided to do um, was get her, so I'm very lucky to have her. I want to talk about why I created this podcast first, and then we're going to dive into a little about me and how to take charge of your life and how I'm taking charge of my life at 23 years old. So the reason why I wanted to start this podcast was to talk about the reality of being in your 20s. You know, when I was younger, I had these expectations for myself and these goals. I thought at 23 years old, I would be a college graduate. I would have an amazing career lined up or have my own business. I thought I would be completely financially independent and stable and have a large friend group um, and really have my life together. And that's not how my life has turned out. And I have realized recently that that's okay, that that's normal. And I compare myself a lot to girls my age and guys my age. And I think like, why don't I have that life? Why, why can I have this cookie cutter, normal, easy, structured life? And I don't. And you know what? That's my journey. And that's their journey. And I'm learning that it's okay to not have everything figured out. It's okay to be confused about your career path. It's okay to need help from your family. It's okay to not have everything going the way that you thought it would go. And that's why I really wanted to make this podcast is to share my journey, share my story. And I know that there's someone out there that understands what I'm going through and they can help me and I can help them. And it's a big community of everybody just coming together to realize that life is crazy. Life is crazy, but we're learning and we're growing and we're experiencing new things and we're figuring it out. So that is kind of the premise of what I made this podcast for. And, you know, I've gone through a lot as a 23 year old and my journey has not been normal and it's been very difficult, but I've also had a lot of amazing things happen and come out of dark, crazy times. And I want to share that with everybody. I want to share my journey because I know that there's someone else listening out there that can relate. And, you know, after having cancer and going through that and sharing my entire journey, which I want to get into in a different episode. I want to talk about every single thing that I experienced. I was able to reach hundreds of thousands of people through my story and hearing how they feel comforted and they feel heard and validated made me realize that I can talk. I can share my advice and my journey because there's someone that is listening there's somebody that can relate to it and if I can help one if I can help one person then that's all that matters so that is the premise behind this podcast and taking charge of my life I have felt so lost and so confused about what I'm doing and after a lot of medical things that have been going on my life is too short Life is too short to care about what other people think. If there's something that you're passionate about and I've always wanted to do, make a list in your phone, on a piece of paper. I did. I have a notebook right in front of me 
of a list of things. Just bullet point how to get to where you want to get to and what steps to take because it's going to push you to do what you want to do. What are we so afraid of? Are we f afraid of failure? Are we afraid of financial stresses that might come with it? What's going to make you happy because it's going to it's going to fall the way it's supposed to be. It's going to unravel the way it's supposed to be because everything happens for a reason and you're going to you know, get to where you want to get to in life with dedication and focus, but everything is going to be okay. Everything's going to happen the way it should be. And by taking charge of what you want to do and where you want to get in life and having these goals is great. So I'm not sure if that made sense. <laughs> I have filmed this four times and each time I do it, I'm saying something different and that's okay. I guess that's a good thing, right? So we're just going to jump right into it. I'm going to talk bullet points of how I grew up and, you know, briefly about myself because each episode I want to dive into different topics, um, whether that be something that's related to my story or not related. Um, I have a lot of different things I want to talk about. So we'll get into deep, we'll get deep, how, hmm. <laughs> I will talk about different topics way more in depth. Um, so today's kind of just like bullet points of my life. So I'm 23 years old. My birthday is May 19th. So it just passed. I grew up in Malibu, California. I loved growing up there. I mean, I love the ocean. I love the beach. I want to be at the beach every single day if I could, which is ironic because I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, where the closest beach is four hours away. So that's my fault for doing that. But I mean, I'd be at the beach every single weekend, almost every day. Um, love the beach. Um, I was very sports driven. I was always doing a sport. I started dance when I was two years old and danced until I was 18 years old. Or I guess 19 years old. That's kind of when I stopped. But I regret stopping. I wish I could continue to dance. I was a competitive gymnast for a long, long time. And that was crazy. If anybody has ever been in gymnastics or, you know, was a competitive gymnast, you guys know how hard it is mentally and physically on your body. That came to a point where I had no social life. My entire life was dedicated to gymnastics. I'd be in the gym every single day for at least six hours, competitions on the weekends. It was my entire life and my body was physically giving out. I was constantly in a cast um, from breaking so many bones. So I stopped that. I did karate. I got my black belt. I stopped doing karate once I got my black belt. Um, I don't do any sports now, actually. I do yoga, but my body's, you know, struggling recently so I can't really work out too much um school I you know middle school was fine I started my YouTube channel in middle school when I was 12 years old and that took off that was my life for a very very long time up until right now this second YouTube has been my career my job everything it's my whole world I love love YouTube I started behind my parents back when I was 12 years old and it kind of took off I remember getting 500 subscribers and I reached out to an agency called style hall I don't think they're still around anymore but I got signed to them when I was 12 I figured out how to do it and I did it <laughs> signing contracts emailing them I did it at 12 years old um I remember getting my first check in the mail for um, $25, which was a huge, huge deal. And I saved all that money since I was 12 to buy myself a car. I remember, well, I bought myself a computer, but other than that, my goal was to buy a car. So I saved all my money until I could get myself a car. Um, I didn't really do brand deals, but Style Hall would send me checks in the mail each month for my videos and the views. Um, so that was my everything. I had so much fun. I had no care in the world. I didn't care what people thought. I didn't care about being bullied. I didn't care at all. YouTube was my life. I had so much fun. I would film every single day. Something different every single day. I loved it so much. Um, 
So what happened after that? I remember getting my YouTube plaque in the mail. It's on my console table right now. I ugh, I loved it. I remember posting a video with my two friends, uh, Ariane and Haley. We did a bean boozle challenge, and that's kind of what skyrocketed my YouTube career. I posted this video of eating gross jelly beans, and it ended up getting 12 million views, and that's really what made my channel take off. So after that, I'd post and post and post and post and I gained this large following of girls my age around the world and it was amazing. I had this community of girls growing up with me. I would get fan mail or subscriber letters and I had this large wall in my bedroom filled from ceiling to the ground filled with subscriber letters and I still have them to this day and I'm figuring out how I want to make an artwork out of it so I could put it on my wall but amazing amazing letters from around the world sharing their story and how I help them in any type of way and I was 13 15 14 it was incredible um I did that I mean obviously I still do YouTube now so that was a journey. I then switched partners or switched agencies to Awesomeness TV, and that's kind of when Adpocalypse happened. So, no creator was really making any sort of money. Really, um, that's when I started working with brands and companies, which I still do, and I love it. I love doing YouTube. I love working with different companies. That was all of high school, basically. Um, I was homeschooled for a year, two years technically, which was amazing. I loved being homeschooled. I was homeschooled ninth and 10th grade and I really thrived in homeschool. I didn't do that great in school. I struggled a lot. I would understand everything, but, and I would do all my homework. I was very organized, but when it came to taking tests, I just didn't do good. So I was homeschooled and I loved it. I went to a normal high school my junior and senior year, and that was a journey. Um, I struggled a lot in high school with bullying, and it was hard. It was a really tough time in my life. I was definitely bullied a lot for my YouTube channel and other reasons. People are just mean. Um, I remember somebody commenting where I lived and where I went to school on my channel, um, I remember hearing that the grade below me, somebody played one of my videos in a classroom and the teacher was making fun of me. And at 16 years old, 17, 18, I mean, that's awful. That's awful to go through. And call, I would be called names across the quad. I would have people scream at me. I'd be shoved. Like, it was just not a good experience. So... I was happy to graduate high school and move on um, with my life, and I went to High Point University for my freshman year of college. I also forgot to mention that when I was 12, my parents got divorced, so that also was something else. That's a different topic. <laughs> There's so much that happened in my life that I it's hard to really touch on each and every detail. So that was a that was difficult. But moving on, went to college, moved out. I went to North Carolina, not knowing anybody. Um, I remember at orientation, we had this big ceremony welcoming the freshman class. And I was like, you know what? Nobody's going to make fun of me. Nobody's going to know about my YouTube channel. I just want to be normal. And the president of the school said to everybody, we have a YouTuber here. She has this many followers. She does this. This is what she posts. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. It's amazing to look back on. And I wish I had the confidence. I wish I wasn't so hard on myself. I wish back then I was, so, I was proud of myself, but I was ashamed. And I do think that's because I was bullied so much for it. I became so ashamed. Um, everybody found out and there were a lot of subscribers there that went to school with me which was so awesome and they were so lovely and so kind and nice and supportive but you know I was bullied I'm having a lot of technical difficulties with trying to film this first episode so please bear with me everybody I'm figuring it all out 
Went to college my first year. My major was business and entrepreneurial studies. I was trying to get my bachelor's degree, and I quickly realized that I am not that book smart. <laughs> I am way more creative, and I really did not like taking all these math classes and business classes. It was not fun for me at all. I was put in these classes where I'm like... I I don't even have the qualifications to even be in these classes. Why am I in this class right now? It was like they were putting me in some random classes. So I knew it probably wasn't the right school for me. Um, no hard feelings. It just wasn't for me. So I transferred schools to a small art school in Miami and I switched my major to fashion design. I have always loved bridal wear. Anything that has to do with weddings, I am all for it. I love wedding stuff, bridal stuff, uh, just everything that has to do with that. It's something that I love and I'm very passionate about. So I was like, I'm going to make a bridal couture line. I've always wanted to do that. I have sketchbooks from when I was a little girl making wedding dresses. So I'm like, I'm going to give this a try. It was fun. I mean, you do all the pattern making, the construction classes, you learn how to sketch and design and fabrics and color swatches and all that stuff. And I remember I took a final and for our final, we had to create an entire line and we could do whatever we wanted. Didn't matter what it was. We could do whatever we wanted. So we had to, you know, talk to the teacher about what we wanted to do and our thought process behind it. And I created this entire sketch of designs and they were all bridal wear and I remember she looked at me and she said you can't do this because you'll never get anywhere with it and you'll never make money and you'll never be successful so she would not let me do it and that was hard because I knew that I mean what if I was really passionate about it obviously I would just say screw you I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it damn good and I'm gonna be successful but that really that really shook me. <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe I can't do it. Maybe I'll never be successful in it. I ended up switching majors again to fashion merchandising, which was really cool. Actually, you learn all about the fashion industry, marketing, uh, different buying. You learn about fashion buying, which I love fashion buying. I had a job where I uh, was a buyer for a yoga studio for a while. Very cool job. I worked with free people. Aloe loved it. Um, so I switched majors. I really liked that major, but something in me was just not, I just, I didn't have the passion for it. So I wanted to take a break from school. So I did. In that time, I was working different jobs and I was struggling with my health a lot, uh, like a lot. I was seeing a back doctor. I was getting MRIs and scans and blood work because I just was not feeling good. And I'm going to do an entire video dedicated to my health journey because it's a long one and it's interesting and I have a lot to say about it. So I was focusing on my health while working and in 2020, I was diagnosed with cancer and that was my priority, obviously. So stopped working and was in LA back and forth to see doctors. And um, I'm currently cancer free. I just hit the two year mark. Um, I didn't, obviously I had surgery to get my tumor removed, but I didn't do further chemo or radiation because it was, there was more cons than pros for my situation. That being said, because I didn't do further treatment, I have to be on it. I'm always at the doctor. I'm always doing scans. I'm, if there's anything that I feel is off, I go see a doctor. I also want to add that I have had so many technical difficulties. Again, my camera died. So we are back. I'm so sorry for if it sounds like I'm cutting in and out. Any difficulties, I apologize. This is my first time ever doing anything somewhat like this. Oh, and Shiloh's on the move. Okay, this is, this is a shit show. Anyways, so I was talking about cancer. Yes, I was. So um, you guys, Shiloh's here. She's all over the place. So I'm always on top of my health because I didn't do further treatment. I was living in Miami still and I wasn't 
in school and I quit my job. I was working at Brandy Melville in Miami and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? Like, I definitely don't want to go back to school. I, You know what? I think I did go back to school briefly. During COVID, I... Wait, what's the timeline? <laughs> okay, so I after my cancer situation, I was still living in Miami for not that much longer because all my doctors were in California and I didn't like being alone. Um, I was by myself. I didn't really have like a core, core group of friends. I had a lot of people in my apartment building actually that I did become friends with um, and still love everybody to this day. Uh, I met all of them because of Shiloh actually because everybody has a dog in Florida. Um, So anyways, I just felt very lonely. All my doctors were in California and all my family was in California and I just started to feel lost again and I've always wanted to act so I thought to myself you know what I'm gonna try acting I'm gonna try getting into the acting industry so my lease was up I decided to move back to LA I was living in LA for this was pretty recently too this was a year ago um I was in LA for only a year a little over a year stayed at my mom's house for a while trying to find an apartment you know what's funny though is when I moved back to LA that same month basically my boyfriend who I didn't know was gonna be my boyfriend left at the same time he was deployed so we just miss each other uh we ended up uh meeting which I'll do a whole video about relationships and my relationship. Um, but we talked every single day while he was deployed. And uh, that that's a different story. It's an amazing story. And it makes me so happy to talk about. But anyways, living in LA, uh, I found an apartment. I was in acting classes, uh, not really auditioning. I was like, didn't even know how to. I worked oh my gosh, maybe like four times that entire year on set. I had one cameo featured role in a show called Welcome to Chippendales on Hulu, which was pretty cool. Uh, He just says, hi, Sage, or he says something Sage, which is pretty darn cool. Um, And rent, gas, money, groceries, whatever. Very expensive in California. And I really wasn't working. I wasn't getting as much work as I thought I would be getting. And um, my lease was up. And I remember my mom just saying, well, what if you move to Atlanta? Because production is moving to Atlanta. I'm like, I would never move to Atlanta. No judgment, Atlanta. I'm here now. Uh, but I just never thought, I never have even been to Atlanta. I never been to Georgia. So I'm like, there's no way I would want to move there if I've never been there before. Mind you, never been to North Carolina, move there. Never been to Miami, move there. (laughs) So yeah, I'm crazy, you guys. So I'm like, no, I don't want to move to Atlanta. That sounds like a bad idea. And I'm not going to get work there. LA is where you get all the work for acting. So I moved to Atlanta. (laughs) And I worked more in Atlanta in the first like two months than I ever did in LA. I was always on set, always doing background stuff, always doing featured background stuff. Um, And... I recently just stopped doing background work. It's just a lot. If you guys, if any of you guys have ever done background work and extra work, it is a lot. It is a, it's very, very difficult and hard to do. Long hours, long days. You don't get treated the best, um, which sounds, uh, it's a little honest, but it's the truth. No one's saying it, but I'm going to say it. You don't get treated that well. Anyways, so doing that, wasn't getting booked like I was getting booked but not as much as some people I know which doesn't didn't make sense to me because I'm like we're all kind of the same casting type I should be getting booked on more 
but I wasn't. So uh, still doing that. And then now we're up to date, I feel like. I feel like we're pretty up to date, kind of. I could be missing 10 steps, but it's fine. I'm sure I will talk about more in the future. So now we're not working, not in school, not doing anything besides going to doctor's appointments. I start feeling sick again, very sick nausea I can't smell things like I cannot wear perfume and everyone's like you're pregnant you're pregnant you're pregnant I'm not pregnant I just don't feel good my back hurts I'm nauseous my stomach hurts so I go back to my oncologist I find well my doctor in LA referred me to an oncologist here and I talked to him he's like let's get a CT scan of your chest let's do another MRI of your face face come back you know, comes back clear. There's like one odd lymph node, but like nothing to cons- be concerned about. <sighs> you guys, my chest CT comes back. My chest is fine. Nothing's wrong with my chest. They find a cyst in my pancreas. So, prior to this, I was seeing a different doctor and I was put on hormones, supplements. My blood work was like all out of whack. Like everything was off and wrong. My estrogen was low. My testosterone was low. My progesterone was low. Everything was just, it was just not good, you guys. So I was on, I was put on so much stuff. I'm also seeing a physical therapist. So anyways, fast forward, I get told I have a cyst in my pancreas and now we're kind of, now we're here. I see a pancreatic oncologist I do so much blood work I just did genetic testing for cancer I just did um two different MRIs and I just had an endoscopic ultrasound which is where they put a camera down your throat and they look in your stomach and they took a biopsy of the cyst and now we wait next Monday I will find out the results but you know what I was like oh I was down bad you guys I I couldn't, like, I couldn't function because I was so scared. And I have all the PTSD coming back. I have all the feelings coming back of for when I first got diagnosed. The fear, the panic, the trauma, the numbness, everything you could imagine that you might feel, I felt it again because I've been through this exact experience before. So... I started going to church again and I got a daily devotional um, book and there was one passage and it basically just talked about trusting God, trusting it's out of your control. Everything that you're going through, it's not, it's out of your control and it helped I almost feel lighter. I feel less worried and less stressed out because I have done every single possible thing I can possibly do to help myself. There is nothing more I can do. I eat good. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. I work out. Well, I can't really work out because of a lot of pain I've been feeling, but it's out of my control. This is all out of my control. So that's kind of where I am now and because I'm going through my I think this is my third cancer scare um it really just took me down I became so depressed so anxious I have severe OCD so I would have these like OCD attacks almost where I couldn't even control how I was feeling and what I was doing and it really scared me it really really scared me and it was all triggered by everything going on with my health and feeling out of control with my body and that I can't I cannot take control of what's going on with inside my body I have no control over that so I I'm now starting my therapy journey again. I think I'm going to start a TMS treatment, which is a whole other topic again. It's a it's for OCD and anxiety and because I have been through a lot of trauma, 
this is something that my doctors really feel like will benefit me and my PTSD um, from cancer and all of that. Um, that's where I'm at currently. It's a wild, wild ride. And I remember my mom was just like, you need to find something you're passionate about do something fun for yourself. Do something fun. I'm like, I. how many times can I go to the pool? How many times can I go on a walk? How many times can I go to Trader Joe's? I'm getting bored. I'm losing my mind. I felt like I was going crazy and I wasn't doing anything productive. And I also, I want to work. Like I want to have a good job and focus on my career. And it goes back to comparing myself to people my age and wanting what they have. And I I do not have that right now. My life is solely focused on making myself healthy again and feeling better. So I remember one day I was like, I mean, like, it'd be kind of fun to have a podcast, but I don't think I could do it. I don't think it would be successful. And she was like, how do you know if you don't even try? You haven't even started. And you have a story, you have a journey, and you have people who have been following you for since you were 12 share share your story share whatever's going on and do it what is holding you back you have nothing else going on well besides the obvious like you have nothing else to lose so I'm taking control of my life and I'm doing it I'm trying it out this might fail I might embarrass myself but you know what I'm having fun doing it and that's where I'm at and I hope you guys are along with me on this journey um there's so much more that I want to say there's so much more I want to talk about but I really want to dive deep into specific topics and this was really just a intro introduction to my podcast and what I want to talk about and just a backstory about me and how I grew up and where I'm at now currently with my life. If you guys have been subscribed to me on YouTube, you guys know my journey. You guys have seen me grow up and um, it's incredible. And I'm so thankful for every single one of you. I'm so thankful for my family. I'm so thankful for my close friends. I'm so thankful for my boyfriend. I'm so thankful for just everybody. I'm so thankful for Shiloh. I'm so thankful. I'm so lucky to be sitting down and talking to you guys and I'm so grateful that I am able to like I've said a hundred times in this episode I'm so thankful to share my story and thankful for that there's somebody that wants to hear me and wants to listen and just one more time another reminder you're gonna be okay whatever you're going through trust that everything will fall into place and everything will align the way it's supposed to align and try to take charge of your life. I love you guys and I will see you in my next episode.